In this video, we're going to be looking at topic 8GA, which is properties of metals as part of the Exploding Science course for Key Stage 3, looking at Year 8. And this is a chemistry topic. So our learning objective for this lesson is to look at what makes metals useful. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe some common properties and uses of metals. You should be able to write word equations for the reactions of metals and non-metals and be able to describe what a catalyst is and explain some of the uses of catalysts in our everyday life. So this is section one of topic 8G, looking at metal properties, and there will be four more sections on this topic. So every single element on the periodic table can be classed as metals or non-metals. And you've already met the periodic table. You met that back earlier in this year. And we can identify if they're a metal or a non-metal by looking at their physical properties. Now, we're going to focus just on the physical properties of metals, but you can also get specific physical properties of non-metals. And then what we use the elements for specifically metals, are going to depend on what properties they have. And we're going to look at some examples of that in just a few minutes. So when we're looking at the periodic table, we have a zigzag line that starts from boron and goes all the way down to astatine. And everything that is on the right hand side here are our non-metals. And everything on the left hand side or the purple colour are all metals. The one exception is hydrogen. Hydrogen is actually a non-metal but it appears on the periodic table in group one but you will learn more about that at GCSE. So you can see that most of the metals, or sorry, most of the elements on the periodic table are metals and they all have very specific uses and very specific properties and that's what this topic is all about. Now, the vast majority of metals will have these properties. Some will not quite have the exact same properties, but we, we look at the general overall properties of metals. So they tend to be shiny. If you've seen gold or silver, you'll know that they are, have a nice shine to them, especially when they have been polished. They typically have high melting points. The one exception is mercury which has the symbol HG, and the, this is an exception because it is a liquid at room temperature. It is one of two liquids on the periodic table, the other one being bromine, and it is the only metal that is a liquid at room temperature. All the others have very, very high melting points. It could be upwards of 1000 degrees Celsius. They tend to be very good conductors of heat and electricity, although some are better than others. They have a high density, and this means they have lots of particles in a small volume. Or they have lots of mass in a small volume. And they tend to be malleable and ductile, and this means that they can be shaped or drawn into wires. So we can take a metal and we can shape it and they tend to be flexible or hammered into shapes, which is why we can get things like cars that are all made of the same basic metal, but they are, all have different shapes because we are able to take advantage of this malleability and shape the metal to fix into the, the shape that we want it to be. Now, since the majority of metals have very similar properties, they tend to have similar uses, but some are more likely to be used than others. And there are a couple of different reasons for this. Sometimes it could be simply that one metal is a better conductor than another, or one metal can be shaped better than another. But sometimes it can be due to things like cost, how they look, and very precise properties. So if we have two metals, one of which is very expensive and one of which is very cheap, but they have the same physical properties, we're going to pick the cheap one because it helps us save money. So companies have to take into account all of these different factors when they're deciding what metal they're going to use. And properties of metals make them very, very useful in our everyday life and they're very useful in many different ways. We are surrounded 
by metals. You have metals in the computer that you're using to watch this video, in your phone, in the car that your parents drive, in your house, and your wiring, your water pipes. All of these things all contain metals and they'll all contain different metals in different amounts. So just to give you some examples, if we're using a building frame, then we would most likely be using iron. And the reason for that is iron is very strong and it is fairly cheap. For water pipes, we would tend to use copper because copper is unreactive, so it's not going to react with the water and then potentially wear away. It is non-poisonous, so it's not going to get into the water and cause the water to be unsafe. And of course, it is malleable. Water pipes are not just a straight line. Water pipes will have to bend around different parts of a building. So the fact that it is malleable and we can shape it, that allows us to um, use copper. For window frames, we tend to use aluminium because it's very, very strong, but it's also very light. We also use aluminium for airplanes for the same reason, the fact that it is very strong, but it's quite lightweight, so it allows the plane to not be too heavy. And in electrical circuits, again, we use copper because it is not only unreactive, but it's also a very, very good conductor of electricity. It is actually one of the best conductors of electricity um, on the periodic table. Now, as well as our physical properties, metals also have common chemical properties. Now, we need to make sure we understand the difference. Physical properties tend to be linked to things like state of matter, or appearance. They're the kind of key ones that you have to know about. Chemical properties is about how the metal reacts and that's reacting with other elements and they're because they have similar chemical properties they're going to react with similar elements in similar ways. For example, metals will all react with oxygen, they will react with halogens which is group seven, so that's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And they can also react with other non-metals, such as nitrogen or hydrogen, or even carbon, and they will form compounds. Now, the most common compounds that we're going to look at are the oxides. And that just means when the metal reacts with oxygen. And we can write out a word equation for this. Now, you've met word equations before. If you can't remember, you might want to go back and have a look in your copybook and just practice how to write out a word equation. But we have our reactants on the left and then an arrow. And then we have our products on the right. So if we have lithium, we can react lithium with oxygen and we make lithium oxide. If we react zinc with fluoride, we can sorry, with fluorine, we can make zinc fluoride. So here's just some reactions of metals. We can be looking at sodium burning brightly in oxygen to form sodium oxide, silver reacting with oxygen and then turning black, and we can call this corrosion, or sometimes you might hear it being called the metal tarnishing, and we'll talk more about that in another lesson. Magnesium can burn in chlorine gas and will form magnesium chloride. And iron and sulfur will glow and they will glow a bright red colour when they are heated and we will make iron sulphide. So in all of these, we are taking the metal, we are adding another element and we are forming a compound. This is what we mean by chemical properties. Now, metals can also be used in, as catalysts in reactions, and this is a definition that you have to know. A catalyst is a substance that are used to speed up chemical reactions, but they are not permanently changed themselves. So what we mean by that is if at the start of a chemical reaction I have one gram of a catalyst, I will have my reaction and it will go fast because of the catalyst, and at the end, I will still have one gram 
of the same catalyst. So it doesn't actually take part in the reaction. It just helps make it go a bit faster. So for example, in the reaction between zinc and sulfuric acid, this is quite slow. And we don't want a slow reaction. That's not ideal for us. So what we do is we add in copper as a catalyst. And you can see that we're getting lots more bubbles now. So this reaction becomes a fast reaction. And at the end, we can get the copper back and we can recycle the copper and use it again because it's not used up in the reaction. Now, catalysts are very, very important in industrial processes and also in our everyday lives. And you'll learn more about catalysts when you get to IGCSE and you'll learn about it in chemistry, but also in biology. Now, the, one of the most important uses of a catalyst is something called a catalytic converter. And these are found in the exhausts of cars. And what they do is they convert harmful poisonous gases that are found in the engine into harmless gases that go into the atmosphere. Because we don't want to be releasing poisonous gases from our cars. So what we might have is we might have things like carbon monoxide, which is a very toxic gas, and it passes through the catalytic converter. And before it is then released into the atmosphere, it changes into carbon dioxide. Now, we know that carbon dioxide is bad for global warming, but it is much better than carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide is toxic. Now, these catalytic converters tend to use quite expensive metals in palladium, platinum or rhodium, but they are used in very, very small quantities because remember, they don't get used up and they are unchanged, so they can be used over and over and over. So this is an example of a catalytic converter. We've got our exhaust um, gases coming from the engine on the left hand side. So these are our harmful gases. They pass through the catalyst and the catalyst is this yellow part here. And then they are going to go to the exhaust and come out of the car. And these are now the harmless gases. You do not need to know how the catalyst does this. You just need to know that we use a metal in order to convert these harmful gases into harmless gases. So that's the end of the lesson. We've looked at what makes metals useful. So we've described some common properties and uses of metals. Hopefully now you can write out word equations for the reactions and you can describe what is meant by a catalyst and give an example. Hopefully everything in this video has made sense, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back soon.